we'll do this first. We'll do this yeah. first. Because I do 115. Or higher. So one half. Oh, this is the push together one, right? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. You know, normally, I hate this chest press machine, and I haven't liked it for years. We finally found a way to make it work. I'll show you. So these handles here, they're loose. And I don't like that. But the problem with most people is what you do is when you get into like a chest press position, all they're doing is they're just thinking about pushing out. And so like essentially your body's gonna take whatever the strongest muscles are, and it's just gonna utilize whatever muscles like you have that are strong to push that. For me, it's not my chest. So I found if I'm pulling in, the whole time and like tr trying to essentially squeeze these together, it activates my chest so much more and I get like almost no tricep involvement. And it's almost all chest. I don't even have to put on a lot of weight and it cooks me super fast. You should listen to Mike bitch and complain about this. It's gonna be great. Ooh. Although, now that I finally have a way to use this chest press machine, I'm really excited because we are gonna be getting in an incline converging chest press machine in the next couple months too. So that's exciting. Enough fucking going out means they're only in. I don't like this, I'm not squeezing hard, right, dipshit. I still hate this machine though. That clip drives me fucking nuts. Yeah, that's why I'm squeezing it. No, 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 not the Oh, you like the back, no matter what. Uh, the seat? Yeah, the seat's easy. That's fine. That's fine. Walk. Steps? Yeah. Yeah, so we walk now. You follow. So there's this thing that we started implementing where we actually literally pace in between all of our sets now. And um, I get almost 4,000 steps now. Doing this shit, it's fucking crazy. Just Peter flexing oh, in the hey. back. What's up? What's up? Just, uh, sick uh, calf. Oh, just sick. one. Have you ever seen Michaels? This calf is sick. What He's up? got an advantage. Yeah, he might be true. He does have a Fuck you, but it's not wrong. It's true. It's it with his mic. Yeah? Yeah, just mic. It's, it's, a, it's a mic thing. It's a mic thing. Sometimes it's those like 30 or 40 year old dads that have never stepped in the gym before. Thick. Yeah. But not chiseled. Why did somebody? True. Might have to like really win, dude. And then Peter might be convinced to have a giant ass poster of. The bunch of gold balls around you. You know, right? Yeah. And a big ass trophy. <clears throat> and then a bunch of muscular men groveling at my feet. Yeah. Not women, because that doesn't happen in bodybuilding. No, right. You don't get muscle for women, you get muscles to gain the attention of men. Yep. That's how it works, and that's okay. Because you should, should have seen the amount of attention I got from men after I won my last competition. It's extravagant. Did you see? Fucking, maybe I just saw it on my own. No, I sure did. No, you would have sent that to me. No, I would have. I don't know why I didn't. I saw it like literally like two days ago. I don't know. I don't know. Spicy. So, prep starts in one week and one day. Doing a 24-week prep into the Alberta Open. The reason I've chosen the Alberta Open competition is a is in Calgary, so it is closer than Edmonton. And then B, the caliber of competitors that are going to this one are high. This is nothing against anybody that I competed at at TNT, everybody did great. But a lot of the competitors that are going to be at the Alberta Open, they're going to re-qualify for nationals because they've already qualified for nationals before. So we've got a lot of big bodybuilders, bigger names from Alberta, and those are the guys that I want to compete against. It's like, see I told you he's going to complain. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> 13. That's not that bad. No, it's not bad. That's over 50% of what we did, and you're on steroids. Fuck so. That's okay. Yeah. Not a lot. But enough. Yeah, it's true. Should we do a pound for pound, or? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, back on track for half a second. I'm gonna compete against the best. Reason being is, if I lose, I want to lose against the best. I want to be properly critiqued by the judges, and I want to be able to get good feedback from them in order for me to be able to improve. If I win, I also want to win against the best. You know, it's kind of part of my competitive nature. I'm not, I don't want to win a medal just because I'm the only person that showed up. Kind of an aspect in like decent condition and decent, decent posing. I want to play, place well or terribly against the best. 
And this competition, by the looks of things, is going to be the one that has the higher caliber of competitors in the spring. Reason three, and this one's probably the most important, even though those last two seem really important. The overall winners for the Alberta Open win a sword. And I want to win a fucking sword. <laughs> sure, I could go buy a sword. That's not cool. Like buying a sword and having a sword, like those people are out there and that's fine, they can do their things. But I want to win a sword. There's a story behind it. Oh yeah. And you bet your ass, if I win that overall, I'm not expecting to by any stretch, but if I win that overall, I am 100% dropping to a knee and expecting to get knighted. I've already reached out. I gave them the idea. So they know that it's gonna happen if I win that fucking, if I win that sword. It's sick. up and just see a fucking, you know, giant 15 foot There's no picture way of me. Good girls and bad girls in PC. We gotta stay on your PR, bro. No, that's perfectly fine. There's no perfectly way. No, no, no. It's, that, it does, every it's a PR big, nightmare. Every big fit YouTuber says this thing. What's that? Every big fit it's, YouTuber it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's very well known that it's good girls and bad girls. Everybody knows what the fuck you're talking about when you say it, too. I still think it's a PR nightmare, and I believe if everyone else does it, it's fine. your bro flexing while you're working out. You know, I actually, what's fucked up is, I actually have my entire posing routine done for my competition already. Nice. I figured it all out last night. Although that twisting. You can't figure it out in a single fucking night. You have to make some changes and like get some input and stuff. Right? You figured out the bolt. There's no way. There's no way you have the entire thing solidified perfectly in like, a night. I don't even have a song yet. There, there you go, that's this, a huge this, aspect this of it. This is the weird part, is normally you pick the song first, yeah, and, you go, and then you figure it out from there. You have to pick a song that works for you fucking ballet twirling and not hit the beat, you know? I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna fucking find, like, because, like, the timing for each pose, like, the amount of seconds that I'm holding them, I can change that. That's Hold wait a minute, is there rules in the song? Yeah, no swearing. That's it? That's it. Okay, so I'll No profanity. Is you gotta get my boy Max to mix your song you for you. Yeah. There you go. When, for my last competition, I was trying to get one of my buddies that is a DJ to make me a song. He's a DJ. And I know that he's a DJ. Yeah. So like I 100% could fucking get him to mix me a song. Boom. Oh. Slowest gazelle. That's right, my philosophy for diva, diva philosophy. Philosophizing here. Philosophy. Do you watch lion documentaries? I watch God, a lot of. Them. I watch a lot of lion documentaries. Don't not fucking talk to me about lions, bro. Mm -hmm. I fucking love lions. I watch Lion King. Yeah, that's not an accurate one. It's, it's based off your height. So because I'm five foot five, five foot six, if I you know use an inversion table, um, I have to be under 170 pounds for weights. Because of your height, you would probably have to be like under 205. Okay, there's no more food for three months. And it's possible. 25 weeks. 25 okay. weeks. No more so we're talking about competition prep. So um, I made the decision that I'm going to be coaching myself throughout my next prep. And under most circumstances, that is the worst decision that a competitor could do just because it's. Pause. It's fucking hard. First I'm leaving. Oh, your piece, your piece now. Cheers, my man. You have take a care. Day. I'll see you Cheers. later. Bye, guys. Have and a good night. Tomorrow. I'll show you a text. Have a good night, you uh, And video. Text. The reason that it's not a great decision for most competitors to coach themselves is a, you kind of critique yourself harder than most people do, and then at the same time, you're also not going to when you need to. Having that objective view from like a coach or somebody else who's obviously more experienced than you they're going to be able to make the decisions without emotional involvement. When you are in prep, emotions tend to get really high. You got a lot of different hormones that are like at extreme levels 
and at like low body fat, you're not having the best hormone regulation. And so coaching yourself is really fucking hard. And <clears throat> even though it's not necessarily the best decision for me to be able to make in the sense of me aiming for success with my competition, my goal long term is more so to actually be su more successful coaching than it is in com competing. Like I'm 34 years old, I feel like I have until I'm 40, which is only six more years. <clears throat> and you know, most bodybuilders that are at my level of mass are here like in their mid 20s. And so like my family is really important to me, so I'm not gonna be using performance enhancing drugs at extreme amounts. I'm also not planning on doing that for 15 or 20 years. I know that I'm gonna be doing TRT anyways when I hit 40, that's actually the main reason why I started doing it anyways. Um, all that aside, I've never coached anybody through a prep. And even though I have the education there and I've gone through a couple of competitions myself, and a lot of people feel like that is enough experience on their own to coach other people through a competition prep, um, I don't want to guinea pig on someone who's paying me their money. Like, I want to be able to get a pig on myself because if I fuck things up on my own, it's on me and that's perfectly fine. And I'm okay messing up my own shit, but I would feel terrible if I fucked up somebody else's prep right off the bat. And not that I'm, it's hard to have confidence in yourself to be able to coach somebody through a competition prep if you've never coached somebody through a competition prep. I might be able to have coaches and mentors that would help me through those things, but at the same time, I have different ways that I look at things and different things that I want to try and I feel that guinea picking him on myself would probably be the best way to do that. So I've decided to coach myself. Along with all that, I'm also doing an incredibly long prep. So instead of the standard 16 weeks, which is now actually looked at as almost too short, I am doing a 24 week prep. The goal of this is most of the way through, probably close to around the 10 weeks out mark, obviously all depending, this is just kind of a generalization, I'm gonna be doing um, a one week diet break to help with my mental, or at least I'm planning on having a couple of weeks extra just in case I need diet breaks. Because last prep, I, you know, I did significantly better than I did on my very first prep. I plan to do better on this prep than my last prep, but it's still something that is hard. And it's because of how difficult it is to be disciplined, especially in those times when you're on low body fat and things like that. I wanna have that extra time there. Planning ahead. Exactly. And so 24 weeks is really long. And like, I do know that on Christmas day, I'm not gonna be following on plan. So it's like, instead of being like, oh, well, why even start in the beginning of December? It's like, because that's still two more weeks of other progress I'm gonna be making. And Christmas day is Christmas day. And then if that's planned, then everything's fine. So I'm really excited about this competition though. But all of that aside, I never thought I would see the day that I would actually be excited to diet because mm -hmm. this is the first time I've ever actually had to like push food and push calories. And I am so sick of fucking eating the amounts of food that I'm, I've been at. Like I had to switch most of my carb sources to rather like just cream of rice or like bagels. Like I eat four to six bagels in a day right now. My body's digesting it fine, so it works great. But it's like, that is so many fucking bagels because I can't stand rice. Like I don't want to be doing those types of things. So I'm just, I'm ready to cut some fucking food back and get fucking shredded. It's gonna be difficult though. And one of the most difficult parts, aside from critiquing my own physique and making sure that I am progressing at a good rate and you know making the adjustments when I need to, is my weight cap. As I mildly mentioned, at five foot five, I have to be under 170 pounds because I am not planning on, like my goal isn't to be pursuing open bodybuilding at the maximum. Not that I have anything against it. I just, I fucking love classic physique so much more. And I only have this year, I think, left to be able to hit that weight cap. Because with the amount of mass that I put on in the last year, it's gonna be difficult as it is to get down there. Unless I can find a way to grow a couple of inches. Which, by the way, I am planning on trying an inversion table to see if I can at least get like that half inch, three quarter inch, and hit that five foot six mark. Because that'll give me an extra five pounds. Partially joking, but actually partially serious. Dead ass gonna try that. Um, but I gotta get down to 170 pounds. And that shit's gonna be fucking tricky for sure. So we'll just have to see how things go. 
I'm gonna keep updating though, probably almost every week. I'm gonna be updating a ton on my fucking Instagram too, so make sure you guys check out on that. But while we do the vlogs, when we do whatever other videos, we'll be throwing up other things too. I'm gonna kind of make it very, very open source. Like anytime that I make fuck ups, I'm gonna document that. Anytime that I'm making changes, I'm gonna document that. Just because I want to be completely open. And if anybody's out there and they wanna be able to learn from my mistakes or see how I'm trying things, then that's kind of there. You know? I do have some of the education there. I did take uh, John Jewett's J3U course, so I do have that. I took a lot of mental notes and physical notes with my last coach when we were prepping, so I have a general general idea of things that I need to do. And um, we're just gonna kind of see how it all plays out. So. So yeah, that's it really for the push day. Um, starting prep in a week. You know, I'm excited for it. It's gonna be good. Yeah, I've got a lot of things already mapped out for it. I've got a uh, general meal plan already created for me to be starting. And um, yeah, I'm excited. So follow along, comment, let me know what you guys think. Check me out, like I said, on Instagram at Devo Hess. And um, yeah, see you guys next week. Keep you updated. Peace.